Well, hey there guys, Matt Dawson here, and today I'm gonna to be tackling four of the biggest questions that I get asked about practice. Let's check it out. Okay, so the first question uh, that I've been getting from students recently has been um, when to practice the guitar? When should I be practicing my guitar? How should I be attacking it? Um, and there's a few, there's a few different things that you need to think about when it comes to when you're gonna do it. Now, what a lot of people um, tend to do is they tend to kind of take the start of, um, you know, I'm gonna do it daily. And I'm going to, um, I'm gonna apply myself for an hour a day. Um, and realistically speaking, if you're an adult, there are gonna be things outside of your control uh, that are gonna impact your day and they're gonna take you away from your goals of you know, practicing the guitar. It could be kids, it could be your career, it could be your social life, it could be sickness, it could be anything. Um, you know, even if you think of it like every time you get bad news, you know, you're not gonna wanna, the phone goes and someone someone's died, you're not gonna wanna go and run your scales for three hours after that. Um, so, you know, there's a human element to um, us playing the guitar. And, you know, when it comes to practice, we have to think about when are we, most energetic when are we definitely feeling up to the challenge of practicing the guitar um, and you have to kind of I guess evaluate what's going on in your life and you'll know on days or certain times of certain days where you're going to be able to have an hour you know of, of you time it doesn't necessarily have to be practicing the guitar it could be an hour of just you know I've got this period on a Monday Tuesday and a Wednesday whereby I know that I'm going to be twiddling my thumbs, struggling to think of things to do. That's a fantastic time to kind of sit there and think, right, well, you know, I could dedicate a little bit of that time to practicing my guitar. Um, and, you, and you do need to do it. You do need to practice. But, you know, I, I wouldn't stress so much about the length of time and, and really focusing on setting a time in your diary and really being intentional when it comes to practice. Because, you know, for me, um, I don't, I don't even really remember practicing like intentionally. I don't really remember sitting there thinking, right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna practice my guitar every day after school. I don't really remember it ever being like that. What I do remember is just practicing a lot, but it was very organic. So, from personal experience, I can't really sit there and say to you, oh, it'll be like this. Um, I've coached other people into doing that and, and that's been kind of hard for me because I've I've never really experienced that myself. All my peers growing up were into music. You know, some guys were liking drums, some people played bass, some people were singers, some people played uh, guitar, but the, the common thread that bound us all together was was our love of music and, and playing instruments and being involved in learning instruments. So I don't really remember sitting there thinking, right, well I need to I need to practice my guitar and I'm not practicing it uh, enough at the moment, so I need to up my practice by 15 minutes. But I usually practiced at a time when, you know, there wasn't a lot of stress. So there wasn't gonna be anything that was gonna take me away from it. Um, and as a, as a kid, you know, there's, there's a lot more of that knocking around than when you're an adult. Um, but you know, so I'd say avoid times where, you know, I've got, I've got a 10 minute window let's learn guitar, you know, that, that's not gonna work. You know, it might be when your children go to bed, um, you know, quietly sitting in a, in a, in a room with the door shut and, and practicing your guitar that way. It might be, um, I don't know, it, it, it might be just as simple as every day when you get in from work, doing a little bit, you know, before I crack open a beer or pour a glass of wine, I'm gonna, you know, sit down and do some guitar practice because you do need to be intentional about it and I think if I'm being really honest, the distraction level wasn't the same when I was first learning the guitar. You know, when I was first learning the guitar, broadband was a luxury. Now broadband is like standard, okay? Um, and there's a lot more going on. You know, there's Netflix, there's, there's iPhones and devices and things that just take our attention away from, from learning the guitar. And we wanna make sure that we're not getting sucked into any of that. Um, so I would say, you know, be, be mindful about when you want to practice. I can't say do it at this time, but what I would say is sit down and think to yourself, when is gonna be the best time for me to practice my instrument? Because that will look different for everybody. Um, but I would say definitely be intentional. And I think you need to be a little bit more intentional than maybe you would have had to have been five, six years ago. 
definitely. I think I think that's just a that's just a given. So I, I realise that I'm rambling here, but um, I just want to really cover these points because they're, they're questions that do come up quite a lot. Right. So that was when to practice your guitar, and again, like I'd say, you'll know when that's going to be. Okay. There is no hard fast rule, but you want it. It wants to be. You want it to be distraction free, and you want it to be regular. Okay. So. You, you're always going to come home from work at some point. Why not do it as soon as you get in the door? You know, after maybe you know having a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or whatever, do some guitar work and think of it like that. All right. Now the next thing um, that people are asking me is why do I need to practice the guitar? And that's a really interesting question because why why we would practice the guitar? Well. It, <laughs> Unfortunately, we live in a society nowadays where there isn't a lot of call to really practice anything um, because everything is so instantaneous. You know, that you've heard that, that kind of, you know, Fox News kind of maybe slating the younger generations for instant gratification, but we do live in a very instant world. Everything's very 100 mile an hour or it's zero mile an hour and it's fast paced and you can click, up, click of a button, you can have food, cabs, you name it, it's it's there. Amazon, you know, now do the next day delivery. Why wait for anything? So the fact that we would need to really label, not label, sorry, labour um, our our learning process and sit there and go, right, well, we're going to practice this. This is going to be really, you know, un unconventional to us if if you're growing up in 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 the modern time now, because you've never really had to go through anything like that. When I was younger, um, not everything was as instant. You know, you called a taxi and you had to wait to get through to the taxi company and then you would, they'd say, all right, it's gonna be about 20 minutes, 25 minutes or longer, depending on when it was. Um, I remember being in Australia and there was one cab firm for the city of Perth, which was insane. That's like one cab firm for the whole of London. And you were just waiting forever for this taxi. I mean, Uber going to that city, uh, Perth, you know, in Australia, that must have been an absolute godsend because, you know, people weren't getting around. People were just not able to get around. And I'm digressing here, but what I'm saying is, why practice the guitar? Well, you need to get better at it, okay? If, you, if you're really serious about learning the guitar, you'll want to get better at it. You'll want to take your learning to that next stage and you'll want to really, you know, progress. And it'll take some work, and it'll take some time, and it's okay to be frustrated with the process, but you do need to do it. Um, and when I, again, I, I can only speak from my own experience, but when I think back to when I was learning the guitar, I don't really think, I, I, I was never very conscious about practicing. I enjoyed music, I enjoyed collecting CDs and things like that, so I just did it. It was just something I did a lot of. Um, and you know that being said it never really felt like work and I think if you enjoy what you're doing it won't feel like work I've got some students that are really really honest and they say you know sometimes practicing doesn't feel great and that's fine and that's real and we have to acknowledge that and I've got some students that just say you know what I tried playing the guitar today and I sounded a bit crap but hey you know what tomorrow's a new day and tomorrow's got its own practice session and we're just going to crack on with that then and that's brilliant that's a fantastic way to look at it um, but I would always say you know you do you do want to be intentional like I keep talking about that intentionality when it comes to practicing you do want to not only be intentional about when you're going to practice but actually just being realistic and going you know what if I want to do this I really want to do this I want to learn to play that song whatever that song might be I need to actually sit down and, and play it and practice it because if I don't I'm never going to get there it's not one it's not you're not growing cress you know, I say this to some students, you're not growing cress. You're not gonna be able to just leave it in a dark room um, and come and check on it occasionally or leave it on the windowsill and it's miraculously just gonna appear. Your guitar ability is just gonna manifest itself. It doesn't work like that. It starts off initially with a bit of passion and a bit of interest and a bit of, oh, I'd love to be able to do this. And it grows 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 through the practice. It doesn't just happen. Um, <laughs> And that's that's counterculture at the moment, especially at the moment. Um, and I think guitar teachers at the moment we're really struggling against that whole Netflix, instant, you know, click of a button sort of world that we live in. It's great for some things, but it's it's kind of altered the 
the reality for a lot of a lot of people. Um, a lot of people have been thinking about, you know, oh, I'd love to be able to to, to do this, but it, then when you sit down with them and you go over what's actually going to be requiring of them, they're like, oh no, no, I can't do that. Or uh, yeah, no, what? Uh, maybe it's not what I wanted after all. So you know, definitely be intentional about when you're going to practice. Um, but be realistic and think, you know, you are going to need to do it and it is going to take time. And if you're not getting the results that you want, nine times out of 10, unless you've got a really bad teacher or you've not been, um, you've not been looking at learning from the correct sources. So like I've spoken before about only relying on free sources, then, you know, you're going to want to make sure that, you know, you've got a good teacher. But if, you, if, you, if you've got all of those things ticked off, then you need to just kind of double in and do the work. I hope that sentence makes sense because in my head it, it didn't really. What I'm trying to say is, um, if you're if you're really serious about learning the guitar, you'll need to actually apply yourselves. And unless you've got a really bad teacher or there's something really wrong with your practice habits, it is just a case of making sure that you've that you're doing what it is that you need, that you're trying to learn repeatedly. Because if you're not, it's, it's not going to get you anywhere. Um, the other question that's come through is what if you forget if you forget to practice don't beat yourself up there's no point unless you're a, a paid musician and you are trying to um, practice the guitar and you're trying to perform it at the Royal Albert Hall or whatever concert hall in Venice or whatever it might be you know unless you've got a job like that you don't need to beat yourself up about playing the guitar um, and practicing it I would say don't be surprised at your results but I wouldn't say beat yourself up over it there's no point um, like I've said before if you're if you get the phone call if the phone rings one day and it's one of your friends and they say John's dead or something like I don't know I'm thinking of a really extreme scenario but you know someone's died uh, you're not gonna want to sit there and go oh right well that's sad uh, anyway back to my chord progression that I'm working on. You're gonna, there's gonna be life events that happen um, that are gonna override practicing the guitar. Again, like I've said, the, the whole thing of learning the guitar comes from a really organic interest, okay? So your first port of call is you, you're interested in music and you wanna take it one step further. Okay, brilliant. So then you move on to um, learning the guitar and taking lessons and things like that. And then step three is the application of it at home. Okay, there are going to be things though that that get in that get in the way of that. Um, but if you just think of it like, you know what? Today we weren't on the plan of practicing the guitar. You know, tomorrow back on. Look at it like that. And as long as you look at it like that, you'll always be happy learning. It's the ones that go, oh, I'm never getting anywhere. I never learn, and I always want to be able to play this this song, and I can't do it. You know then those are the guys that fall out of love with playing and the, the guys that stop. Unless you're a, a, a professional musician, you don't need to beat yourself up. But just don't be surprised at the level of your results. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. But don't beat yourself up over it because it really isn't worth it. It's not going to make you, the whole process of enjoying the guitar any easier. It's actually going to make it harder. You're going to feel worse about yourself. You're going to feel worse about your progress and you're just going to stop playing. So don't, don't beat yourself up too much about it. Okay. And, uh, what should I, uh, uh, what should I practice on the guitar? I've spoken about this before, but I would usually recommend picking one thing, one thing a week, or you could even take that one step further and go I'm, for this month. I'm only working on these three things. Um, and just doubling down and giving real focused attention to those things. Because if you if you try and spread yourself too thin, you'll go absolutely nowhere. You've heard of the term jack of all trades, master of none. Uh, that means that, you know, hey, I can do a little bit of this and a little bit of this and a little bit of this, but I'm not very good at any of it. You want to make sure that, you know, you're giving real focused attention to one thing. Um, I was watching something the other day about how they cut diamonds. And they cut diamonds with lasers. And these lasers, it's like all this focused energy that goes straight into one point. And it, it's such a concentrated pressure of energy that that's how it cuts through the, the hard material that makes up a diamond, you know, the diamond, the, the stone. Um, it, it, it requires a certain level of energy to actually cut through that stuff. But if it was, if it was just like a light, like a lamp being shone on it, it, was, it would never go anywhere and it would never, it would never cut through the, the material. 
It's all that energy being focused onto one specific point that actually cuts through the diamond and actually makes things happen. If you spread yourself too thin, you'll never learn anything. Now you might think, all right, well, what's, what should I learn first? Learn the simple stuff first. Learn the basics. Don't try and learn Stairway to Heaven in your first week. I've just had a conversation with a student. They're like, I wanna move fast, I wanna move fast, I wanna get this, I wanna get this. I'm like, just slow down. Take it slow. Don't go a million mile an hour, because you won't go anywhere. You're just gonna run on the spot and burn yourself out. Take what I'm giving you each week and apply yourself, and then go from there. Don't try and, don't try and learn everything at once. Because by doing that, like I said, you'll go nowhere. But if you learn one thing at a time, you'll realize that you can learn that one thing, you can do it, and you can do it well. And that makes you feel good when you're learning your guitar. And that makes you want to learn more. So there's kind of like, it's like I'm playing a psychological game against myself. If I learn something and I can master something, I feel good about myself and I, and I want to learn more. I want to get that feeling again. But if I'm going into like this whole process of learning the guitar and I'm just floundering around trying to learn everything and I'm YouTubing this one day and I'm going on YouTube and I'm trying to get this song down and I'm, I'm doing a bit of this and I've got a folder. I've seen a lot of guitar folders and I've got a folder and it's got like a collection of songs in it and I'm trying to just learn them all. Yeah, yeah I mean, I get it. But you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to get anywhere doing that. So just really think about what it is that you want to do and just attack it systematically. I'm gonna learn my basic chords this month. C, G, and D, whatever. And I'm gonna get really good at those three chords. And you might say, well, that's not very interesting, okay. But the more your ability develops, the more interesting stuff you can do. It's kind of like a, it's a bit of a trade-off, really. You can't bypass all the basics and go to the really good stuff and, and learn your favorite riffs automatically you just can't um, and in the rare cases that people can do that there's usually gaps in their knowledge and that brings me to what I want to talk about in terms of having gaps in your knowledge because learning the guitar is a lot like think of it like a building so when they uh, you've got what's called the concrete pour uh, when they when they're building a big skyscraper say in like New York or something like that they have to lay the foundation so they they the concrete pour is like the official beginning of when of when the building project takes place. So when it's going to start, they don't start just randomly. It starts from the foundation level, and it, they they fill in like they, they dig out the foundation and they 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 plot everything out and then they start just at the very base level, and then from there they build up. If they were trying to build a bit on the bottom, then build a bit over here then try and build another level over here. You would have gaps. And what you would have is you'd have a very unsteady building. It would be kind of blowing in the wind almost. It would wobble, it, would, it wouldn't be very good at all. Um, and it would fall down. Now, that obviously is quite a, a dire sort of situation. But if you take your, your guitar learning journey, you don't want gaps in your knowledge because what you'll find is, okay, I've learned my basic chords, now I'm gonna learn this song. Oh, this song says learn this this chord. Well, what's that chord? I don't understand. Oh, right now I've got to go back and learn this chord. Oh, now it's asking for a C sharp. Well, what does C sharp mean? Okay, well, ma major minor. Well, what's the difference between major and minor? And you kind of jump forward, then you've got to jump back 12 steps, and you just get really frustrated. You might say, I'm going to learn C, G, and D for the first month, and I'm going to just practice that. And I'm going to learn maybe one song that's got C, G, and D in it. And that's it and you'll get really good at that. And then you go and you do, again, you do it again, and you might add another chord into the mix, or you might learn a scale, or you might learn a new riff or something like that. But if you, if you take of it, it, you know, you eat the elephant one bite at a time, as they say. You can't just go and tear into it. You've got to take it, take it slow. So um, hopefully that tackles a lot of the questions that we've been getting recently. Uh, if this has been any help to you, uh, please let me know in the comment section below. And do click that subscribe button um, and you'll be able to see more information about other videos that we've done popping up around the screen now. Have a fantastic rest of your week and if you do have any specific questions, just let me know and I'll happily tackle them for you. Have a great one. Bye.